Hey, good morning, friends, and welcome to this unique service at Elmer CRC today, a service of lessons and carols as we count down to Christmas. Uh, with me right here is Miss Lennox Lanninga, who's going to light our Advent candle for the day. Fire it up. Her big brother Ryan is sick, so false advertising on the screen. But there are five candles here, and the countdown goes like this. Five, four, nice work, three, two, one, Jesus. This is what we are counting down this time of year and why many of us feel excitement as December marches on. Um, at today's service, there is going to be quite a bit of scripture, of Bible reading um, in this Lessons and Carol service. This scripture is not meant to entertain you, okay? So if you don't feel like fully adrenalized the entire time, great, that's not our goal. Uh, this scripture is not even meant to educate you, to fill your mind. There's a lot of scripture in this service because our intention is that you can soak it in and absorb God's good news and salvation plan. Does that sound okay? You don't have to run around for an hour. You don't have to get anything done. You get to sit here and absorb the word of the Lord, hopefully to a deeper place in your heart. Now, Lessons and Carols is a tradition that goes back more than 100 years to Cambridge, England. The original service, there's 12 Lessons and Carols. There are going to be seven today. Okay, so you get to count down from seven to one during the course of this service. Um, every scripture reading will be one of the lessons, and after each scripture reading, there will be a musical response, and those are the carols. So lessons and carols. Are we all on the same page? Awesome. So sometimes the choir is going to sing the carol, the musical response. Um, sometimes there'll be a soloist, and sometimes all of us will sing together. If there are musical notes on the screen, that means we're all singing together. If there are just words, it means the choir's got it covered. Got it again? 
And um, big thanks to our choir and Aaron Laninga, the choir director for planning and leading this service. Aaron will motion to us if we're supposed to stand. So if you're wondering, keep your eyes peeled on Aaron um, for that. There will be a short timeout about halfway through. We're going to dismiss our younger kids to worship, have a few announcements about other activities in December, and I will offer a very short message because God's word and the lessons are going to be what we want to absorb here today. I'm really excited to spend this hour in God's presence with you. Uh, can we go before God for just a moment in silence? And then the silence will be broken by God's word in the first reading. Let's go to God together in the quiet. Lesson number one, Song of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter nine, verses two through seven. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as the people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, every warrior's boot used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fueled for the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son has been given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, the prince of peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring. 
Lesson two, Song of Mary. Luke 1, 39 through 55. Mary visits Elizabeth. At the time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of the Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors.
Lesson three, the Song of Zechariah, found in Luke chapter one, verses 57 through 79. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard about it wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. to the Lord, the God of Israel. He's come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised a horn of salvation, a horn of salvation in the house of David. to the Lord, the God of Israel. He's come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised a horn of salvation, a horn of salvation in the hearts of David. He spoke through Prophets of old, salvation from our enemies. He spoke through the prophets of old, mercy that was promised to our ancestors. His holy covenant, the oath that he swore. You shall be called. Salvation and 
Lesson four, the Song of the Angels, Luke 2, verses 8 through 15. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping over the watch of their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Good morning. Parents, I wanted to let you know that out on the children's worship table in the lobby are Advent family devotionals. There'll be a new one there every Sunday. Please feel free to help yourself. It is now time for our preschoolers and kindergartners to head to children's worship. If you have a preschooler or kindergartner who would like to go downstairs, please walk them down, following Ms. Kristen Reitzma, who's in the back holding the green sign. And while they're doing that, why don't we all stand, turn, and say hello to those around us. Okay, 
Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the little time out right in the middle of the uh, worship service. Um, Kara, Jeff, and myself are going to make a few announcements about other things going on in December. We're going to invite the deacons forward and receive this morning's offering um, while we're speaking. I did want to point out the, um, the solo that Olivia DeYoung sung to the Song of Zechariah um, was written by a member of our congregation, uh, Dr. Dave DeVasto, who teaches at Elmhurst University. There's hardly any musical settings of that part of scripture, so a couple months ago, we were like, hey, would somebody write some music to this? And Dave was like, I'll write something for this. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. He, he was the guy playing the violin on it, by the way. Um, so, so far in the service, we've been hearing about God's long-standing ancient plans for salvation. It is also true that God has ongoing plans for the continued salvation of the world, and they involve all of us. For some of us, that involves being on the front lines of participating in ministry, many of us. For many of us, it means funding that ministry in Jesus' name, which is why we take an offering every single week. And for most of us, it means being involved in both. We know that it's God's plan to give us joy and freedom as we participate in this. Um, after this morning, we're going to say like six things. You're not going to remember them. In the middle of your worship folder today, there's kind of a calendar of some of the events that are coming up. For example, Pastor Jeff. So on, at 6.30 Thursday morning in the garden room, we have our journeyman ministry for the men of the church. I'm super excited about this week's speaker. His name is Chris Baker. He's a tattoo artist who happens to be a follower of Jesus. What? Impossible. And the great thing is he started a not-for-profit called Inc. 180, and he works with the FBI and Homeland Security helping to deliver women who have been sex trafficked and remove the mark of the, the enemy off their bodies. Some of them have barcodes, some of other things. He sits them in their chair. He removes the mark of the enemy for free and tells them about the gospel of Jesus. So come, if you're a man, Thursday morning, 6.30 in the garden room, and hear Chris's story. And then the next day, Friday, December 15, you are all invited to a night of carols and cocoa. We'll be in the garden room at 7 o'clock. We'll have hot chocolate, Christmas cookies, and singing led by Pastor Greg, Aaron Lanninga, and Robin Vitson. Every age is invited to attend. And then a week from today, on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., uh, we are going to present Andrew Peterson's Behold the Lamb of God. It's an awesome musical experience. Um, immediately following that, there's going to be an opportunity to decorate Christmas cookies in the garden room. So if you're a cookie monster or have a kid or an old person uh, who would be into that, I'd love for you to stick around and have some fun doing that. Friday, December 22, we have our annual live nativity. We'll be in the south parking lot. We would love to have you come out. There will be 10-minute worship services at 4, 5, and 6. We'll sing a song, hear the Christmas story, light a candle, and then afterwards, if you would like, you can step into the animal pen to meet the goats, sheep, and llamas. I told you you weren't going to remember all this. Right? <laughs> It is all in the worship folder. Um, on Christmas Eve, which is a Sunday this year, on the 24th, we will not have a 10 a.m. morning service. We will have a 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. worship service in the afternoon, and then an 11.30 Christmas vigil, um, where there be communion right at the turn of Christmas morning. So if you're a night owl and would like to spend that morning in worship, it's a beautiful time, but no Sunday morning worship on Christmas Eve morning. On December 31st, which is New Year's Eve, is also a Sunday. It happens to be fifth Sunday serve. Now, we're going to have a worship service that day, so we're still going to worship, but we're going to offer you a chance to still serve, and we're actually going to offer you a chance to serve even before that day. We, as we were planning this this week, all of our serve projects over the years have developed relationships in the community. We keep showing up and people keep looking to us now to help them. So the social worker at Stevenson School in Brandywine wrote me an email this week. I'll just read you a couple of the highlights. The holiday season is among us. This is usually a time to celebrate, relax, and be surrounded by our families and friends. But for some families, the winter break also brings stress, hunger, and puts parents and children in need. I have had many families in the last two weeks reach out because they are in need. 
We have families in kindergarten that don't have funds to provide their kindergartners with a daily snack for snack time. We have families who are getting their lights almost or shut off. We have families sharing two bedroom apartments, 10 people in an apartment, and the list goes on. There's 24 families living in this community two miles from here that need our help. So we've got the list of families out on a table here. Lindsay Van uh, Vervelde has uh, met with Jocelyn, who's the social worker, and there's 24 families out here that need someone to sponsor them and help provide them with some Christmas needs this Christmas. Here's a suggestion. You could get with another family. You could adopt a family, and you could put the stuff together, deliver it to the school by December 21st, and you can help one of these families. So this is part of our Fifth Sunday Serve. On December 31st, after the service, we're also going to serve some other folks we've, we've learned about in the community that need our help. We're going to pack them a Happy New Year kind of care pack and deliver it to their home on that day after the service. So stay tuned, but after the service, I hope you find your way out to a table, grab another family and go support a family and give them what they need this Christmas. Okay? Let's pray, and then we'll return to Lessons and Carols. Jesus... Thank you for coming. Thank you that you moved into the neighborhood and you were uh, one of us. You came alongside of us to help us in our time of need. Jesus, as we celebrate this Christmas, Lord, we pray that we would soak you in. We pray that we would learn to, to behave like you in the world. Uh, Jesus, thank you for a chance to meditate this morning on this amazing story of your coming to the earth. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Lesson number five, the song of love, from the book of John, chapter three, verses 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. That actually took me by surprise, too. Uh, some songs are meant to put us to sleep, right? We call those songs lullabies, right? Um, if you're a parent, it's a wonderful thing to tuck a small child into bed. Um, Lullaby and good night. Uh, Rockabye baby, that's a weird one. When the wind blows, the cradle will drop. My mom sang that one to me all the time. Blame it for a lot of my issues. Uh, but some songs are meant to wake us up, right? Hence the bugle call in the morning. Do you know what we call that song? Anybody who was in the military or went to a camp that was really hardcore and woke all the little kids up with that song? Reveille? You know the song? Music can wake us up. In fact, one of the powers, amazing powers that music possesses is that it can enliven us and energize us and motivate us. Have you noticed this at sporting events? What happens before like a bunch of guys in helmets and pads run out of a tunnel? Like there's music, right? Like adrenaline filled music. What happens when the Chicago Cubs walk up to home plate? Everybody has a walk up song these days. Um, maybe you had a parent who did this for you. These days, I feel like most parents gently shake their children. Like, Honey, it's time for school. I'm gonna make you some breakfast. Like, we're more gentle these days. Um, some of the people who had old school parents, my mom would come in my room and yell at me, up and at him like a biting sow. <laughs> I'm traumatized. Sometimes she would sing the reveille, you got to get up, you got to get up, you got to get up in the morning. She'd turn my lights on and like start singing that. 
Music does have the power to wake us up. That is the point. And that is the point of all the songs that you're hearing this morning, even if the mood in the room is appropriately rever reverent. God is singing, if I can put it this way, a reveille of love over everybody. His word is meant to wake us up in John 3.16 in particular, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That should make all of us, even the most cynically religious people in our midst, like stop short and be like, wait a minute. I need to wake up to this reality. Exactly. Of course, we have the option of waking up more and more to Jesus' presence with us or kind of sleepwalking our way through life, as frankly, many modern people are doing. Um, recently, my wife and I learned a very charming Scottish phrase that I'd like to share with you. Uh, the words are, harkle darkle, or in Americanese, herkle durkle. Am I lying about this? It basically me herkle durkling means like when you wake up in the morning to kind of just like lounge in bed for too long and not get anything done. Like, doesn't it sound kind of great on one level? So please spread this phrase far and wide. I don't think we have anything like this in America. Herkle durkle. So here's the thing though. Many of us are her herkle durkling our way through life, right? We're so worried there's a presidential election next year. Is it really gonna be Biden versus Trump? Who's a person to vote for? Should the red team or the blue team win? Is inflation gonna increase? I wonder if I'm gonna get a cost of living raise this year. I just got on TikTok and three hours of my life passed and I don't even know what just happened. Like there are so many ways like to dedicate the best part of our conscious thought to sleepwalking our way through life because what I'm telling you, all of those issues do not hold a candle to the reality of God's presence and power in Jesus Christ, which is always available for us. Hence God singing this reveille of love to try to wake more and more of us up. People were not awake in Bible times either. Zechariah, whose song we heard, an angel visited Zechariah, told him he was gonna have the son who prepared the way for the Lord, and Zechariah, who was a clergyman, mind you, did not get it. He just was like, hi. And the angel told him, because you don't understand the word of the Lord or believe it, your words are going to dry up for the duration of this nine-month pregnancy. And Zechariah did not talk until his son was born and then said, his name is John, like the angel told me, and then burst forth into this prophetic song because in his nine months of silence, he did wake up. It's good of God that he doesn't make all of us fall mute for nine months every time that we're recalcitrant and spiritually slow, like there would be a lot of quiet people in the world. Amen? <laughs> Amen. I just got a message um, from my sister who lives in Turkey this week. Um, I was able to be there, go to some New Testament sites this year. One of the places we visited is a city called Izmir on the west coast of Turkey. I mean, it's a big city, three million people. Um, the number of Christians there is just minuscule. I mean, 1% of 1% of 1%. There are a couple old churches dating back to the 1700s, 1800s, and this time of year as Christmas approaches, these, these old churches with hardly anybody who goes to them invites people to come in and hear about Jesus. Last year was like the most well-attended year in anybody's living memory, 400 people showed up. I mean, in a city of three million, like 400 people interested in hearing about Jesus. This year, like five days ago, my sister sent me a picture of the person keeping the head count. 4,500 people showed up. In one year, in a country where nobody follows Jesus, like t a factor of 10, so lest you think that God is not singing this song of love, even in corners of the world that we don't know about or concern us, like God is singing this song and there are places where since last year, 10 times the number of people officially woke up. 
My question to you, for us, this season as we count down to Christmas, is if you want to be among the people who are more awake, truly awake. Here's my warning to you. If you truly wake up to the reality of Jesus and his kingdom, you're gonna be weird. Like you're gonna stick out in a crowd. People are gonna see your behavior and be like, there's something going on with this girl. I can't quite figure it out. And my hope and prayer for myself, for you all, for this church, is that in this season where we are counting down to Christmas, that we are among the company, like 4,000 plus Turkish men and women, to say, yes, God, I wanna show up. I want you to show up. I want my eyes wide awake, like the best morning that I ever came to and was full of energy and the smell of coffee and bacon in the room and I had a great day of good things to do ahead. That is what Jesus wants for the course of your life, to rise and shine and go with God's music. Um, Zechariah was a clergyman 2,000 years ago who totally didn't get it. There was another priest named Simeon in Jerusalem. He totally did get it. Lesson six is his song. Lesson six, Song of Simeon. Luke 2, 25 to 35. Now there is a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him, took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too.
Lesson 7, Psalm 96, 1 through 3 and 11 through 13. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Shall we give thanks to God for his good work for us? Uh, at the end of all of our worship services, we always have elders and prayer partners at the front right of the sanctuary. If we can pray for you, listen to you, support you in anything, uh, we would love to do that. Also happy to anoint you with oil for healing in Jesus' name and invite God's power and presence in your life. Um, I'm going to offer a blessing now, invite you to receive it as from the Lord. May the Lord himself give you the capacity to hear the songs of Christmas and above all, the song of love that is Jesus in our midst. May God give you the courage to wake up, rise, walk, and live in his name. In his name, go in peace from this place. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen.